Satan has tried to keep you in the dark and keep you from learning the truth that you are a member of God's army. And as such, you are a very special and a very powerful weapon. Are you ready to turn on the light switch so that you can see what was previously unseen? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. I'm going to share with you today something that is so extremely personal and important to me, and it's this. Satan does not want you to know the information that I'm about to reveal to you. He has done everything that he can to hide it, to deceive you from it, and to keep you from understanding the spiritual truths about what's happening in our lives and in the culture around us. Hi, I'm Pastor Don Purdom, and this channel exists, this video exists, to encourage and inspire you, not just in the Word of God, but also to expose what's happening in the culture around us, so that we may grow closer and more intimate with the Lord Jesus Christ and with one another within His body. Now, I want you to stay with me throughout this video, because as I go, I'm going to share some things that I am almost certain of in my own experience in talking with thousands upon thousands of Christians that you have likely never even heard before. And it all comes straight out of the Bible. Revelation 12.9 tells us that Satan has deceived the entire world. He hides in plain sight and completely goes unnoticed. Still, people label his works as natural causes, mental illness, or just coincidences, or even social progress. Jesus knows what it's like for Satan to attack your mind. After all, he had Satan come after him during the 40 days of temptation in the desert. He knows what it's like when the adversary probes the recesses of your mind and tries to trick you or to deceive you or to influence you to do something that you know is wrong or to convince you that something is wrong is actually not wrong at all. And here's the beauty of it. Jesus taught us and he showed us exactly how to fight back. So today, let's dive in and let's talk about how do we push back against this one thing that I'm about to reveal to you that Satan doesn't want you to know. Spiritual warfare is real, and whether or not you know it, you are a part of the war that is going on all around us between good and evil. In my own experience, many churches simply, they, for whatever reason, they just don't talk about spiritual warfare. It's as if it's a voodoo subject because we talk about Satan, we talk about deception, we talk about spiritual things and spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places as Paul talks about it in Ephesians 6. But the challenge for us is, if we don't talk about this, then how do we ever overcome our anxieties, our fears, our depression, our supposed mental illnesses that are actually being plagued upon us, not by anything that's happening necessarily in this world, but the things that are happening in the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, whether or not churches talk about this issue, the reality is, is that we are all a part of it. And let's break that down and let's talk about what it means because I'm going to start to reveal some things to you, like I said, that you just have never even heard before. First, in this war, we must understand who we are before we even begin to grapple with and understand who Satan is. And we must wrestle with our purpose and the reason why we're here at this moment in time, in this life, all for the glory of God. If we can begin to understand why and how Satan is trapping us in despair and in hopelessness, then we can begin to understand our role in the spiritual war going on around us and how that impacts our lives and how it impacts what's happening to us or to me personally and to you. And, and what is your role 
in all of this. So here's one of the very first secrets I'm going to share with you. When you became a Christian, when you said, I surrender to Jesus Christ, when you said, I believe in Him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you were baptized in the Holy Spirit, when I, mean, when I say that, I mean when you were baptized in water immersion, the Holy Spirit sealed you in your salvation. He, he sealed you at that moment, and then He works out your salvation. You work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's a process over your lifetime called sanctification as we become more and more like Jesus, more and more in His image. And then finally, we are once and for all redeemed. We are once and for all saved at the resurrection when we receive this this new body that's spotless and sinless, that we'll never have to contend with fear, never have to contend with anxiety, we'll never have anything to do with depression, we'll never shed a tear, we'll never know what pain feels like. What a glorious day that's going to be. Now here's the thing that you probably were never told. It's something that you've never even given thought to, that you don't even realize it. You were immediately upon your baptism. It was your signature on the dotted line. It was your oath of office, as if you just joined the military. And, and repeat after me. I say your name. Do you solemnly swear? Do solemnly swear. To support and defend. Support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That's right. When you were baptized and the Holy Spirit sealed you in your salvation, you were enlisted in God's army. And when you begin to think about spiritual warfare in this context, when you begin to think about your life and your purpose and your meaning, it changes everything. Now, why would I say that you were enlisted into God's army? Well, we have to realize that when Lucifer and one-third of the angels fell from heaven because of their rebellion against God, God didn't go and make new angels. So now you have a depleted angel corps who, what is their purpose? Their purpose is to be God's messengers, to be his protectors, to be not in the sense that God needs protection because he is sovereign, he is all-powerful, but... We know where we as human beings are concerned that angels minister among us. They minister on our behalf and they also protect us from whom? Lucifer and the one-third of the demons that followed him in unrighteousness. See, when they were cast out of heaven at that very second, well, really prior to that, at the second that that Lucifer, who, who is Satan, became so enthralled with himself and so arrogant and so proud and he, he decided that he was going to become like the Most High. Well, at that moment, sin entered into the equation. And when humans sinned, when Adam and Eve sinned, and when you and I sinned, we participate with Satan in his ultimate work. And his goal, his ambition, his purpose is to keep us from God so that we participate with him in his unrighteousness and we ultimately worship him instead of the creator. And though this battle rages on over the last four, five, six thousand years as some of us would define it in the Christian terminology of the history of humanity, we know exactly what the outcome is going to be. Let me read for you Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, 10. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The point I want to make is, is that God did not replace the fallen angels. He did not make new angels. What did he do? He chose the church to be the instrument. Before I share with you some additional things that the devil does not want you to know and how you can protect yourself, we must first understand exactly who he is. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14 tells us exactly why Satan was kicked out of heaven. How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the earth, you who have weakened the nations. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. 
and I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recess of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. In just a few short verses, the word I is repeated over and over again. That's not by accident. This is who Satan is. Satan is all about himself. And, it, and in that, you know, wanting to become God, wanting to become like the Most High, wanting to actually usurp himself over God's own authority. Another way of saying this is that Satan was instituting a coup. Now, Lucifer's name meant son of the morning. It was a beautiful name to describe exactly who he is, just like a beautiful sunrise coming up over the horizon. Words that just can't be explained, but the admiration of pure beauty. Satan, on the other hand, his name means adversary. Why? Because he became the adversary of God and God's people. So how does Satan undermine God and attack us? First, by using our sin against us and then attacking us through our identity. See, we are the only part of creation that God imprinted upon us his image. Satan absolutely hates that. If we won't choose to change our identities, then he will try to trick Christians into accepting alternative identities. And he will try to do it all under the guise of tricking us through love, sympathy, and understanding. Does this sound a little familiar? In a parade of rainbows and thousands of messages of inclusivity. That long ago when I was growing up, it, you know, you couldn't be. You couldn't be out. You couldn't, you know, have a girlfriend or, you know, small town Texas. You know, so it's very freeing and very... Just happy. Especially for Michaela Gleason and Joshua Walt. Or he will try to diminish our identities in Christ by convincing us or showing us somehow that we're not worthy or maybe our sin has caused so much problems in our lives that how could God ever love us? How could Christ ever fully accept us for who we are because of what we've done? But remember what I said earlier. You are a new creation in Christ. Second, I've already outlined for you how he will use lies and deception to try and trick us. And then third, through false prophets and teachers and other church leaders who would try to lead us astray from the Word of God. I want you to know, just as Jesus fought back, you can as well. And he has equipped us with everything we need for godliness and righteousness. So let's look at how can we protect ourselves. Let me give you three basic ones and then we're going to jump into this a little deeper. Okay, I want you to stay with me. Don't go anywhere just yet because I've got something for you that you absolutely need to hear. But before I get there, I have three points that I want to share with you. What I want you to realize is that what you put in your mind matters. Entertainment, culture, music, countercultural arguments, all of these things, if we're not careful and don't have a right filter, take us away from God and allow Satan's army to infiltrate us with very unhealthy things that erode our ability for combat. You've heard that voice for so long, you believe it to be you. You believe it to be your best friend. They should believe their opponent to be their best friend. Where's the best place an opponent should hide? In the very last place you would ever look. He's all up here. Pretending to be... We can be persuaded to follow our own egos and justify our actions. However wrong they may be. Satan through the culture can and will attack your weaknesses. He knows exactly what they are. And it's not because he particularly knows you personally, but he and his demons know about you in the sense that they have been wandering around on this earth for thousands of years. They have seen maybe trillions of people come and go. They know 
our personalities, they can identify our behavioral patterns, they understand what triggers us and what doesn't trigger us and how to move humans in such a way that they will either deny God or walk away from God or just prove to live a mediocre Christian life that has no value or meaning. And it is these kinds of things that I believe ultimately cause anxiety, fear, and depression because we're not living in our purpose. More on that in a few minutes. Again, stay with me because I've got a lot to say here. You're not going to want to miss this because I'm going to tie it all together really quickly here. But for the moment, the point is, is that our minds are the gateway that allows Satan to set his trap. And once we're ensnared in it, if we don't recognize it, we just go deeper and deeper and deeper and further and further and further away from God's people, away from the church, and away from God. So how do we fight back? How do we fight back against this? How do we fight back against the temptations and the, and the traps and the deceitfulness and the lies? Here's how we do it. Know yourself and who you are. What are your weaknesses? Don't lie about them. Be transparent. Be transparent with your spouse. Be transparent with your pastor. Be transparent with your best friends because they will love you and help you and be one of the guardians over your soul. So what are the weaknesses that all of us have in one way, shape, form, or manner? Maybe you have one of these. Maybe you have multiple, multiple numbers of these. Could it be money, possessions, sex, power, or ego? Second, happiness and joy are not the same thing. And until we get that cleaned up and understand that, then we're going to have a very difficult time in our lives with the spiritual warfare being enacted upon us by our adversaries. Now, you may already know this, but, you know, joy. Joy is a permanent thing. Happiness is a fleeting thing. They're not the same. The bottom line is we may not always feel happy. Our circumstances may not always bring out the best in our feelings, but joy. Joy gives us perspective, and it gives us the, it gives us the ability to endure and persevere through challenging trials and circumstances and tribulations in our lives. So let's look at a few passages about joy. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. John 15, 11. Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. John 16, 22. Again, Jesus says, Therefore you too have grief now, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. Galatians 5.22 But the spirit of fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. James 1.2-4 Consider it all joy my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect results, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Okay, so in the first point, we talked about knowing yourself. In the second point, I talked about distinguishing joy from happiness. And then third and finally, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6 and the full armor of God. So let's look at the full armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6, and let's see what Paul said, and I'll have an illustration up to show you the Roman soldier and what he wore and why Paul tells us that this is applicable to spiritual warfare. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. 
Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. All right, so let's break down a few of these words and let's see exactly what the Apostle Paul is communicating here as he's talking about the full armor of God and spiritual warfare. The first word I want us to look at is truth. Truth in this context, it notice that it's girding your loins with truth. Well, truth holds everything together and it refers to the believer's integrity. The breastplate of righteousness Righteousness practiced by the believer is to protect the chest and the heart from Satan. The gospel gives our feet and our lives support and stability. And the large Roman shield covered with leather could extinguish flaming arrows. The shield consists of faith. And the helmet guards what? I want you to notice this. The helmet guards our mind and our thoughts. And the sword is the only offensive weapon mentioned in the full armor of God. And it is the word of God spoken both to our own hearts and to the world around us. Earlier I mentioned you were enlisted in God's army at the moment that you were baptized. So help me God. So help me God. And at that immersive water baptism, the Holy Spirit sealed you for the day of your salvation. As in human warfare, spiritual warfare requires order, discipline, and unity of purpose. Are you ready for boot camp? If you are, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you're thinking right now. Congratulations! If you stayed all the way through this, you have learned what Satan never wanted you to know in the first place. You no longer have to live in anxiety, fear, worry, or depression. Those are all tools from Satan that keep us from getting close to God. There are wedges that divide us and separate us and try to cause chaos and inject anarchy into our lives. You weren't created for that. The Bible tells us that as a believer, you are not given a spirit of weakness and timidity and fear, but one of power and strength. Embrace that. Hold on to that. Use that in all of the things that you're going through in your life because if you do, you will begin to see your life differently. When you begin to realize the spiritual warfare going on around you, that yes, we know from Daniel chapter 10 that the angels are in warfare all around us against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. If the angels are protecting you, then aren't you worth jumping into the fight? Aren't you worth getting that order and discipline that you need for the war and for the battles? Because you may not win every battle, but I do assure you the war is already won. So thank you for watching all the way to the end. Please take a moment and let me know what you think about this. Did, did you learn something about how Satan has tried to keep you in the dark and keep you from learning the truth that you are a member of God's army? And as such, you are a very special and a very powerful weapon. Folks, nothing can hold you back. Only you. And Satan will try every trick in the book to deceive you, to throw you off guard, to make you believe that you don't have any value or any contribution whatsoever. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You are the most valuable thing on earth. All right. Take a moment. Leave a comment. Please be sure to like it. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. 
Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. I'll see you again soon.